20 minutes late. Uh, definitely just got the coloring book all pretty much wrapped up. There may be a couple little tweaks with the print shop now, but, uh, we did essentially a 32 page plus cover. So 30, I mean, 36 page, uh, coloring book, uh, and activity book in basically a week illustrated the whole thing. So, uh, yesterday I worked probably 17 hours of the day according to my phone which logs when I start an app like that's in the art apps it'll log for you there's this nice phone app that uh, basically tells your boss when you're working or not essentially but that and then the day before I spent literally 20 hours out of a 20 hour 24 hour period doing the bulk of the illustrations because they needed to get it ready before it went to Peru uh, before they fly to Peru and bring the books to Peru out into the Amazon. So that was pretty exciting. We got that done. And uh, yeah, so literally just sent the final email. I'll, I'll show you guys some excerpts of it on the computer here in a minute. But how's everybody doing? I know we're going at a weird time right now. And that's because I was literally so stressed and probably sleep deprived that I was like, oh, we, we got a stream. Today's the day to stream, and it's at 4.30 usually. And then I realized, oh, wait, on Mondays, I said I was going to stream at 7.30 or 7.40 p.m. Uh, and so I was kind of like, well, should I cancel it? And then I saw how many of y'all were here, and I said, I, I can't cancel it. I have to at least... Uh, I have to at least come on and say, hey guys, what's going on, uh, and and see if, if y'all needed anything, essentially. But also, want to show you guys a, a little bit of the, the coloring book that uh, I've created, and uh, yeah, so that's what I am up to, and boy are my fingers just messed up. I work with my hands too much, apparently just I just I just wreck my fingers this one like this thumb I don't even think has a recognizable thumbprint anymore probably <laughs> so uh all right guys so who is in here fee fi fo fum I smell an intruder in my bum <laughs> in my live stream uh no planaria is not going uh no planaria is a cool product it is just betel nut extract which is a drug it then constricts blood vessels and mucous membranes it essentially dries out or dehydrates and so creatures like planaria or even snails that really depend on those mucous membranes to you know live uh, it, it ends up rupturing the cells and, and causing them to break down, uh, like melting them, basically. Kind of like salt does on a slug. However, every organism has some cells that are susceptible to those chemicals. In humans, it, it's a drug for a reason. It clamps down our... Uh, our circulatory system and uh you know all of our nervous system it activates and it, it's kind of like caffeine or nicotine the way those work whereas to a small creature that's a high dose and it, it can kill it uh, but it's essentially like a caffeine or a nicotine the way it's an, a stimulant that's active um and in all of Polynesia and uh, Southeast Asia, they chew it. Um, and it's literally the same exact stuff. Uh, it's pretty crazy. But I wouldn't use it with extremely sensitive shrimp in, let me say, that, in the full dose time. Um, from what I've observed, sometimes a few shrimp will die. And so I've found it, that it's it's kind of better to <clears throat> put the the dose in in the water and then 
you take the water out and do a water change of like 50% like before bed. So maybe in the afternoon you dose it, then before bed you do at least 50% water change, and then in the morning uh, you do another water change, and if 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 it says to dose twice, then you dose again, and then that night you do another water change, which is pretty hard on shrimp. So it's kind of a, I don't know, uh, it's kind of a rough treatment, but nothing else really gets rid of planaria as effectively that I've found. I mean, if I were you uh, using it, I would probably grab all the the biggest, best shrimp that you can find and move them out of the tank for a bit if possible. That's, that's what I would say. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you guys was, uh, what else? I got a couple new cribs and I also got uh, a few more pencil fish uh, just because they're very inexpensive right now. And then uh, my uh, uh, Somfongzi or Somfongzai uh, Rasboras, uh, they are spawning again, which is great. But I've moved them to their own 25-gallon tank that's extremely planted. So let's take a look at that real quick. And uh, then I'll show you guys some of the coloring book, too, that I've been working on. Um, but, yeah, these guys are super happy they're the only fish in here and the long fin uh individual is is in here somewhere but i'm assuming they're dropping eggs just somewhere down into the substrate i should probably have moved some moss down there for them but they're in here um hiding a bit but they have been doing their spawning behavior even though i switched tanks on them which sometimes when you switch tanks on a group of fish that are ready to spawn and stuff, uh, oftentimes it can kind of stress them. But in this tank, this I'm, I'm trying kind of an experiment in this tank in that it's so incredibly well planted, and it's actually very low on water right now, but it's an incredibly well planted to the point that I'm cycling groups of fish through here that, are, that seem to be doing spawning behavior, nano fish. And it's so thick and hard to get through parts of this tank, and then there'll be a void, you know, that I'm hoping that the egg scatterer type fish are able to um, do something kind of interesting and, like, have their babies, and then, like, I won't even know it. Like, they'll just appear one day as tiny little fry, and there's enough infusoria and stuff from all the leaves breaking down and all that so there's that um the other thing <clears throat> another little project while i'm thinking of it is this is a little sundew uh plant from our state from washington state and uh it came to me in a little bag like this and it was literally just a little maybe three leaf sprout and I decided, let's see how far we can grow it in a bag without opening the bag. So it's using its own moisture, its own light, its own everything for right now to do that. Uh, so yeah, I, I think it's doing way better. So let's compare. I got two starts of this plant. And the other one I put <clears throat> into one of my little, vi I don't know what you want to call it, riparian bowls, vivarium bowls, uh, over here. So the other sundew is not doing nearly as well. I think it's doing fine, but it's just kind of stunted. It's, it's, uh, it's cool looking and all, but it's, it's just not as lively. Whereas this one has really taken off growing tall and there's a lot of leaf nodes on it which is kind of weird looking for these plants usually they get big at the base and then bigger leaves rather than just a ton of teeny leaves but also my string of uh hearts my purple hearts they're doing awesome as well like they've been just 
just growing like a weed. I mean, I got these. This one's probably growing a half an inch a day. So I need to move it, replant it, um, repot it rather. Um, and yeah, so that will happen in due time. Maybe I'll put this, I kind of want to put this in actual sunlight and see how, how much, how much oomph we can get from there. <coughs> All right. So, you don't want to see my face now. Um, and uh, there's not much new in here other than there's no room for the fish. So I'm supposed to go to Eugene uh, this coming weekend and also stop in Portland. So I'm going to try and cut a bunch of plants keep a bunch of plants as as many as possible so we've got a bunch of unifasciatus uh one line pencil fish uh here's that and then equus pencil fish uh, if you guys remember i went to the aquarium co-op they gave me three uh one line pencil fish and three of these uh equus you can see the one-line pencil fish is pretty different in its texture. It's got, like, uh, a bunch of scales that are uh, very... They, they stand out pretty hard from the background. And then the finnage, there's there's solid black on the lower caudal tail fin. Um, whereas the equus... Um, here they all are. I got a group of about 12 total. Um, from the group prior and the new group and uh, the equus have more of uh, a red streak if we can see the tail there and then it's not it's just not solid black but they love this tank here with this flow over here and then the uh the plants all over and then the other thing that I mentioned last time, but I've actually cleaned it up a bit, is I've started picking all the um, all the the stuff that's rotting. Like this is rotting; it'll probably get pulled soon. But now we're ending up with just red root floaters, and oddly enough, there's like duckweed within this palace of red root floaters. Um, this is interesting. This is the fastest I've ever had a rhizome grow, and this top part was out of the water underneath all of these and it was starting to rot right here in the midpoint because it had no light absolutely no light in the center and no flow of water to get it new nutrients or to take away micro um, micro uh, nutrients and things you can see all the rhizomes on it are nuts but I mean this thing is uh, petite Nana, and it's probably an inch here, and then another inch, another inch, another inch, another inch, so it's probably almost at least, I would say six inches of rhizome coming to a top up here, which is just a little unusual, usually it'll sprout all over, but... It's because it was buried, so that's kind of interesting. But, yeah, so the thing I was mentioning, though, the other day was you see all these little white, there's little white uh, dots if you look really closely. Not that big white dot, but there's little teeny white dots that you guys can probably see swirling around. There's, like, a whole bunch of them. Well, those are, when I looked into the microscope, they are infusoria uh, or... or uh, paramecium and this whole immersed island in the tank when you have a piece of water lettuce or a piece of uh whatever anubius or red root floater that it's rotting you then end up with that in a pocket so like right here there's a whole bunch when i disturb the water just from that melting leaf and it just slowly kind of puts it off into the main water and that's where the smallest of the fish so like the little rasboras and the, but the pencil fish in particular are feeding off of that even the adult pencil fish are loving the infusoria um so that's kind of cool 
and also this live live no matter what i use whatever camera i've ever tried nothing gives me the color reality that i want i need to figure out something i'm it's probably just going to be some absurd price is, is the end <laughs> the end uh reality but i want to find something that really can give us the full picture of what we're looking at so you guys can see what's going on now there's a yellow leaf under there um I'm trying to even figure out, is that just a giant leaf? I'll have to get tweezers. I don't want to disturb everything. But, yeah, so I'm trying to, I'm waiting a few more days. I probably can't wait any more days on these, because these poor guys are, like, they're basically, these angelfish do not like to be cornered like this. It's stressful for them. Uh, and even though they can just move aside all of this stuff, they they don't they just sulk in the corner even when i push everything down and, and all the other fish are just weaving and bobbing and pushing it aside and eating off of it and stuff even like the lightest feather plants they just they they have a fit so there's that also i just find this endlessly interesting for some reason well, maybe not endlessly but interesting that's a piece of hornwort where the bottom end of it got stuck facing upward on the glass, and it has started to grow all over the glass. Uh, very interesting. I'm assuming that it is eating the biofilm that's dried, like here, uh, from where the evaporation has taken place. But I don't know. I, I find that very interesting. Also, the wisteria, such a great uh, example of, here's this plant underwater, looking looking very nice, and very arugula-y, parsley, and above water, it looks like, oh, you know, weed in the yard, but it's got broad leaves compared to the skinny leaves of underwater, and then these are the transitional leaves, um which is yeah pretty interesting uh how it just transitions from down in there now the bulbitis it has no real transitional tissue that looks different it is different it feels different but it's it's not a big deal and then the anubius fraser eye holy cow do these leaves get big when they're out in the air um they have all the things they need to grow big and strong essentially when they burst from the water it's like they don't have to fight against the light they don't have to fight against getting co2 nearly as much they don't have to fight against gas exchange and, and oxygen and all the stuff that they're uh doing every night so it's kind of it's kind of cool to see like and here is another one that's kind of fun um this is hygrophila polysperma or uh, rosenvig sunset sometimes it's called hygrophila and again I'll have to show pictures because this isn't doing it justice it's such a beautiful little plant when it's out of the water but it's also a really beautiful plant in the water it's this one here and it's illegal in a lot of states just because it, it's invasive like milfoil or other invasives you see in the hobby that um, that are around. Like hit here is another illegal one. Matten Grossin uh, is a milfoil. Essentially, most of them are. Uh, but there, in our state, we have weird laws where it's illegal, uh, but. It's not like they're not like they don't have any fine or punishment to to merit out unless you're spreading it intentionally, essentially. Um, so yeah, and somebody just asked if I have any shrimp in this tank, and the answer is yes, but they're more active at night. I'm trying to see if we can even find any right now, but when you've got a tank this dense, um, 
your community fish spawn constantly too but any any small creature can end up living down in this whole layer it's not necessarily like a deep substrate method it's almost like the deep the deep forest or the deep jungle method of of planting so that you get this layer of only the smallest fish or the fish that are the most likely to go down and explore or go down in there but there are literally hundreds of shrimp in this tank that just hang out at that lower level and they just help clean. That's really all they're doing. Um, let's see if can we see any over here. Um, I don't see any at the moment. Usually if I... Usually if we go like this, let's see here. We peel it back a little bit and take a look at what's 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 the buzz tell me what's a happening what's the buzz tell me what's a ha oh there's there's a little baby shrimp right there man we were having this problem last time during the live that just baby shrimp and shrimp in general just don't want to focus <laughs> this camera does not want to focus on them that is for sure. But yeah, here here we've got like literally dozens of babies just flinging out of the the bottom here all hanging out down in there. So yeah, you can have shrimp with angelfish. Um if they swim up high, they become lunch with the angelfish. Uh but in theory, yes, you can keep a population going uh with angelfish uh especially when you have like a void down in here and this plant is looking really nice uh at the moment the nitrates being zero um nitrates nitrites and ammonia all being zero and the uh the light being so strong on this tank i'm really hoping it'll give me another flowering but we'll see uh, also, I got third place in the pack a bowl contest, so that's fun. And thanks to uh, Jason. Um, oh, here's a shrimpy. He's right up front. He's saying hi. Um, so this this is uh, precarious in that I put it in the windowsill, and any new tank that you put in the windowsill is kind of asking for trouble with algae. I'm just going to be honest. Uh, why is this turned? I guess my wife turned it. But I'm waiting for the explosion and then to see what happens, how my tanks handle it, how the little ecosystem handles it. Because right now, um, you can see the, the fish poo and the mulm and stuff on the rocks. At the bottom but the fish are looking great I mean they're looking happier than ever and they've been doing their little spawning thing uh, in the mornings and evenings uh, pretty regularly and then the shrimp also I've seen several buried shrimp so I know they're happy too so that's pretty cool that there's a full ecosystem going down in this little jar um, and even outside of the little jar although the humidity out here I think is killing the moss the lack out thereof rather but I think this tank or this setup does lack a bit of the undergrowth thickness that I that I usually uh, would employ for best results um i'm trying to get you guys the the long white cloud that has the the big golden anal fin that's so cool looking um these are like a the hong kong long fin long what do they call it hong kong yellow long fin even though it's still mostly red but one of the males in here it has this super long fin. So this is a no the normal ones. Also, you can see there's diatome algae starting here. 
That's because the sand right here is in contact with the water column. And the sand has silicates in it. And that's what diatomaceous algae is made out of usually is uh, silicate particles. And then obviously you need some phosphorus and sunlight and, you know, all the normal algae party favors. But that is what creates it. So I'm kind of deciding, like, do I clean it? What what am I going to do? Do I let it go? Do I let it algae over if it wants to? And then see if it comes back to equilibrium. Like, as long as the uh, parameters are healthy, I, I kind of don't know the answer to that yet. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, there's the big yellow fin. Long fin. The yellow isn't showing up on camera super well, but those lower fins are all bright, clear yellow. He's a very handsome little boy. And then we got the other assortment of... Uh, prayer plant and uh, you know begonia dracaena over there nerve plant here so we got a couple things going on um, alright I want to see who's in the chat and give y'all a shout out and just see I haven't seen any questions and maybe that's because I'm a big dum dum but I haven't seen any at Alex or at secret history um uh, other than uh hey kelly d what's up we ought to put you in the back of a car and your hand behind your back um <laughs> let's see here uh verily verily kc what's up uh eduardo what's up man uh david rayner how it go how goes it uh kyle thompson Hello, Skeddy Nona. Uh, Master. Oh, wait, I already got you. Uh, Nano Aquarium Guy, 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 Guy. Fish Tank Dad, hello. Um, hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining us. Michael Hinton, hello. Brian Levy, what's up? Or Levy, what's up? Uh, Big Dog 35, hello. Welcome to you as well. George of Aquaball, oh, Aquaballs, I love your new logo with the ball python and the uh, the aquarium, the aqua, aquarium. Uh, <laughs> Zombie Cat, what's up? Who else is in here? Scuba Steve, oh, hello. Angel Ramirez, what's up? Good to see you too. Uh. Let's see here. Alex, I've heard that feeding live bloodworms can cause planaria. What do you know about the relationship? Well, I mean, if your fish don't eat them all, yeah, any leftover food of any sort uh, that's rotting will cause planaria. But there, there's no, I don't think there's any inherent link between the two beyond that they, they just have a biomass uh, like, they leave these little tubes, you know, where the, the young planaria can kind of crawl in and eat their, the the nutritious in, inside part of their being. <laughs> but, no, I don't think it's anything special. Hit that like button. But Aaron Haley, what's up? Good to see you again. I know you were here last time as well, but I love to see my Seattle lights. Seattle lights. All right. Um, so I was going to show you guys some pages just casually here. Where do planaria come from? Everywhere. They're, they can be very, very small, the young ones. But, I mean, generally they travel in water. There are, like... Some that can live outside of water for a while. It depends, I think, totally on other factors. Hey, Dragon Lair. What's up, dude? Good to see you. 
I don't care if you're late. That's okay. You can be late anytime you want. Okay. So, this is the little girl that I illustrated that she's like a princess who is inheriting, taking over the forest and basically friends with all the animals who are trying to defend the forest from threats. Oops. Uh, you know, threats. Amorphous threats. Where the heck? Trying to figure out where the heck the the tab went. Like literally, it's just gone now. Oh well, we'll go back to the Gmail. Let's see. Open. I'm so bad with uh, non Max now that I've, I haven't used a PC in and so on. But yeah, you know, we got some jungles doing jungly things. Um. We've got little games with, you know, spot the difference kind of things. And that's the main character. And that's her when she turns into a pink dolphin. Now, we have it colored and uncolored. So, the cover will obviously be color. But we're kind of trying to work out if some of the pages will be color also. Uh, to kind of assist show them what some of these main characters look like. But then we've got like a puzzle, and we're going to, like I, I drew up, you'll see, I think you'll see the, the other version of it. And then we've got like fish, just a cutesy little fake fish <laughs> that doesn't really exist. And then a fish, uh, we've got the Oscar and the discus. And then here, the picture from today is uh, the main character, the, the little girl who's also a magical dolphin. You know, that sentence makes sense. I, I don't say it every day in my average life, but it, it makes sense. Yeah, the, the girl who's a magical uh, dolphin. Yeah, yeah, that thing. Um, but yeah, so I illustrated that the other night, and the kids will be able to color that. And then there's some simpler stuff, more kind of clip arty stuff, as well as um, a poacher that, that captures a bunch of the birds and... Um, then they make the birds escape, which is cool. And then we've got our bad guy in the story. That's a generic bad guy. <laughs> um, and Eduardo the bird. And these are placeholders. Like, this was the last edition draft. Uh, the final one will be unveiled later. But basically, I needed to illustrate art for the margins here so it's just a placeholder at the moment but uh then we've got find uh fish and animals of peru you can probably tell okay i'll say which which one of these five was not drawn by alex williamson Everybody got their their ideas locked in. Which which one of the five is not an original Alex Williamson? All right. No, actually, the stingray that was me. It's the uh, it's the little goofy fish here, the the duplicate of the angel. Um. So yeah. What's up, honey? 
I'm gonna say hi. I don't need to show oh yeah, I do. <laughs> hi guys, my my owner's here. Will you put new um, wood wood chips, the little um, wood shavings, in my enclosure for me? Yes. Mine smells like ammonia. And also, my feeding pellets are getting low. Thank you. All right, so then um, we've also got uh, a tortoise from the Amazon, but then birds escape. That's another placeholder at the moment. Um, so the weird fee fi fo fam you got in here. Uh, yeah, that was weird. I, I did end that with a bum, so that doesn't make sense. Alex, been enjoying a lot of your uploads. I'm in Washington west of the Cascades. Can Platy survive outside in tanks here? West of the Cascades. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they can. Um, it kind of needs to be over around mm, 60 degrees or so at night as the low for them to do very well. Um, they can survive oftentimes lower than that or longer than um, just a few days or whatnot. But it really does just depend on um, the line of platies, what water they're used to, where they were spawned. If you have someone who keeps platies in a tub locally, that's absolutely the best place to source them. So then, in this one, we have a maze where the kids have to complete a maze, and there's a, a that that's my rendition of a poker, uh, or a poker, a poacher. See his net? That's him poaching. And then the the Nalda and Eduardo. Although she looks like she's like spaced out when you look at her eyes from far away. So yeah. But um, we'll just I'll skip through just to show you guys. So then this is uh, Eduardo, not named after Eduardo in the chat. You go away, Eduardo, if, if, you, if you're trying to collect your royalties, sir. I don't want to hear it. Uh, but then we got more games for the kids. Uh, I illustrated this tree where they hide in the story. And uh, another one where they have to find all the trash that's in the rainforest and uh, circle it. Um, and there's like a list of what the stuff is that they're looking for. Um, and then there's tic-tac-toe. And again, we got little Eduardo with his arm out. And then at the end, there's a, like a little puzzle thing that I wrote out that is... A little hard to read, but as they color it, they'll find it saying, You are beautiful. So, that is Miss... Miss, uh... Miss Maserol, Miss Miss Anthony, Miss Doc, Dr. Wonderful's uh, wife. And she really is quite wonderful. She's an awesome lady. Awesome human being. Uh, and she... Her and I kind of kicked around ideas on what the storyline would be and stuff, and then she worked with a translator, hammered out the actual story, and then got that to me about a week and a half ago or so. We had it kind of like solidified, and then we've just been in this mad dash trying to get it finished. So um, this is the only break I've had really in a few days um, of more than, you know, like 10 minutes of getting something to eat or whatever. It's been... A lot of hours but I'm really happy with the way it's gonna turn out I think um, for the time we had and all that so and then we'll learn each time we do this because we want to do several adventures but as you guys might know I've done my own coloring books um, over the years one on fu fungi and mushrooms another one on uh, tattoo art that uh, never got used basically. It's it's like back pieces and things from when I was tattooing that were never, uh, that nobody ever decided to come back in and, and do, uh, as well as a few more pieces that were on like skateboard art and stuff that wasn't licensed to anybody but me. So like there's nobody out there already paying for them. Uh, but 
that kind of art. So I like really detailed coloring books and stuff, but obviously for kids, it's a different speed, a different vibe. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's interesting, um, doing a kid's one, especially like, uh, where can we get your other coloring books? Um, you know, I haven't been selling them online a whole lot lately. Uh, cause I'm down to very limited amount. I've sold a few thousand between the two books and I'm just, I'm not, uh, I don't have that many to sell. I have a few hundred left between the two, maybe like mm, 150 of one and like 80 of another. Um, but I, I, maybe I should, um, sell them, put a link to selling them somewhere on my one of my pages for uh yeah but i sell them at in-person events so if you have me come speak at your club or whatnot um i've always brought them when i'm speaking at at clubs or giving a a talk on the history of fish or the genetics of guppies or the impact of war in fish or post-world war ii fish hobby i've got a bunch of different talks that are ready so if um and oh and i've got an exciting announcement that i will be down in Central Florida um, in December now, speaking for uh, Grant Eater and, and Lucas Brett's uh, Fish Club. Oh, right on, George. Your uh, macrostoma just bred? Yeah, if, if the, they're sneaky. They'll have a bunch of babies in their mouth all of a sudden. Um... You'll be there, ticket to space. All right, I'll yeah, I'll I'll make a note to uh, bring those books, and then I'll be in Eugene this coming weekend. So I should remember to bring some books to that, as well as some plants. And then the other thing is, I'm gonna be selling the Malawa shrimp. Uh, I haven't opened it up in a, in a while, but with all my medical costs and things going on right now. Uh, it's a good time, and uh, yeah, so I need to raise a little bit of extra money, I've got quite a few of these, and I'm feeling really good about the health of them, and you know, I've had this colony for seven years, and they're just awesome shrimp that keep everything immaculate, and they're just one of my, I would say, you know, secrets to my success uh, with with biotope type tanks or, or, or um, at least with, with filterless tanks for sure. Um, and yet again, we, we always end up down here with me futilely trying to get a shot with all this stupid reflection. But I really would love to get you guys a shot of how pretty the blues, the blue um, mala was are looking now, there's one, uh, looking quite dapper. Um, and I don't think anyone else in the world has them, so I don't know what price to put on that, you know? Part of me just wants to get them out into the hobby and, like, let people enjoy them and uh, do, it, do it for very, very inexpensively, like, you know, five or six bucks a, fit, or, uh, a shrimp. And then there's another part of me that's like, dude, you've been working for seven years on every week setting aside the different colors and feeding them and pushing and pushing uh, the limits of where they can live so that they can live in more and more uh, diverse waters. So these shrimp have lived in everything from 5.5 all the way down to... I don't, or I mean, all the way up to, I should say, alkalinity, uh, maybe 8.2 or so. They are by far the hardiest shrimp species I've worked with. And this, again, is the blue tank, as I call it. Most of them have a sky blue hue to them. And some of them are downright very blue. Whereas the females that get pregnant tend to turn purple or burgundy. And some of it's just short term, and other times you get throws that are bright red so then i have a red colony um see there's one that's red right there uh 
And again, I think it's one that's pregnant. Let's see if, if it'll focus when it gets itself situated. But the red ones, this is a natural color one. You still get these a lot. But the blues are something that only I have as far as I know. I think only, only the Alex Williamson Secret History Living in Your Aquarium has the blue Malawa. Because it has taken a lot of shrimp selecting for and going through them to get these blue guys. The frustrating thing is they get like tired and stressed and then they go to clear especially in bags and it can be a little tricky sometimes to get them to color back up and be relaxed um, but their natural setting is clear like they're just kind of like different earth tones so yeah but in any case I think I'm gonna start selling those as well as maybe some plants and a few other odds and ends. If anybody wants dojo loaches, come on. Right now the, the weather must be very stable, the barometric pressure. Because they're not they're not budging. <laughs> But everything's pretty much status quo in here. Um, the rainbow shiners should be going out soon. Some of the CPDs I'm going to try outside whenever it whenever it hits. Like it, if it only gets down to 55 at night, that's when I'll probably put things out again. Um, then we got the Midaka red caps, which have actually stopped laying eggs for me, and I don't know what's up. They were laying, like, up to a dozen eggs a day for a while, um, so I don't know if they're just tired right now of it, or if they just need to switch up their environment, or what. Then also the mock Chiensis bettas, here's, uh, we've got the male, and then the female over here. But they're actually a very nice, beautiful blue and, and kind of metal or gray, raspberry, reddish color within like a blueberry on the fin. Oh, Kelly says, I attempted to send you a super chat. Must be an issue on your end. You know, the last few live streams, yeah, there haven't been any super chats. There's been a, there was one super sticker the other day um and then kenny i think two two chats ago had one but i don't know what's going on i've been having some i've, I've been having some troubles on my end so maybe the super chat function is down you can always use um you uh the uh the links to um to venmo or uh paypal if you like i always appreciate that um I get a bigger chunk of it anyways without them taking 30%. But, yeah, so there's not a ton to report in the tanks or anything like that. But it is a really beautiful and fun uh, tank here. This biotope tank is probably one of my favorite tanks I've set up in years. Uh, the plants are kind of at a stalemate. Like, they're growing rather anemically. And they have all their nutrients they could need. I think that they might actually just be too burned out by this light. This light is very, very strong. And if you guys watched literally just a handful of days ago, you guys probably saw these flowers when there was one flower. And these guys over here in the corner were all this height. Well, in like three days, they've grown, what, two inches or something? And uh, also we've got a part of a bubble nest over here of one of, uh, where is he? The big male. It's actually his, even though he's farthest away. Uh, but he's been guarding it for her. So yeah. Um, oh, thank you, Lori. I really appreciate it. Uh, you just posted a link to uh, my PayPal. So if, if you guys want to 
donate a little bit something something then uh, that's great if not no worries oh eve hey looks like australia is able to or a a is that austria where's a from not a u or a is that australia well in any case eve howard was able to to, to toss in two bucks thank you so much i really do appreciate it um yeah australia okay thank you so much eve uh that's great every every, uh, every super chat means a, a lot to me it really does so I, I showed you these guys the other day but I'm still really excited about them these are the uh, Garami the sparkling Garami and these ones are from a different collection point the wet spot had these for sale for like four days and then they sold out but luckily my local fish store ordered some from them uh, and I said yeah I want those let's let's order those in and uh, these have, some of these anyways, have yellow instead of red or orange as their main fin patterns. Which, that is something newer. Uh, I haven't seen that. But they're, they're just a beautiful little fish that's always, always underrated. I mean, they sell them for three to five bucks generally. Uh, but I just, I love them. They're, they're fun to watch. Those are fun to watch. Um, here's the female right here versus the male, which is much more bright, more the dots on it show more. And then here, the, the rosy loaches are just another awesome fish that I wish the hobby was more into, um, more into breeding and stuff. I should get more into seriously trying to breed them but here's the female rosy loach they're, they're just cute and they bounce around and they're real uh chipper upbeat kind of fish real peaceful but then the males which where the heck are all the males usually they're right right in with the females causing a, a world of annoyance to the females um Oh, there's one of the males. So they're a beautiful champagne, peach, pink, uh, red. Just depends on their mood. And then also the Lake Inlay Loach. So we got the, the two Loaches, two Garamis, three Danios in here, species-wise. And, uh, yeah, I'm real happy with this tank. Uh, the algae is coming back. Oh, and cyanobacteria has taken over here. So I need to figure out, I need to talk someone, talk to somebody smarter than I who knows a little thing or two about why it is that cyanobacteria would have come in. I did wipe that slide um, completely, like this, this drainage slide, and it was plastic again. And so I think that it, it was just a matter of what's going to grow back, and I think this just kind of jumped in. So I'm curious to see if I wiped it again, if that would be the same result or not. But the world may never know. Uh, yes, please, the coloring book. Yeah, the, the coloring books are something that I really enjoy doing. Um, but, of course, my computer crapped out on me. Uh, you know, you guys know that. The week and a half before, we it was really like crunch time, go time. For that and so that was really frustrating um, also this tank has had a whole lot of uh, these lotus or, or whatnot falling apart and in the last 24 hours alone I've started to get more gram negative or rather uh, maybe gram positive actually um, bacteria or water slime water uh, cyanobacteria the which is interesting though because the males are super red ready to spawn super uh colorful and in their full glory whereas and the females uh, mostly were like in tune looking ready to spawn also and i don't know if it's because this is creating infusoria for them but I just have to really monitor this tank and make sure that the ammonia and other stuff isn't, you know, creeping up. Uh, should all be zero, undetectable. So, 
There's that. And then, uh, let's see here. What else have we got going on? What else have we got going on? All right, all right, all right. Um, do you keep banana plants? I do not have no bananas. No, we have no bananas. We have no bananas today. I'm sorry. On your AquaClear tank, Noah, you also have... Uh, cyano uh, exclusively there. Hmm. Yeah, you know, the problem with cyano is if you get it on a net, your hands, if you put a piece of water lettuce or um, red root floater or anything and you put it into a new tank, it's gonna just spread like cyanobacteria, like duckweed. Uh, so yeah, it's, it can be quite frustrating to, to, to try to get rid of it. Um, naturally, in the end, most people just decide, uh, other than sometimes aeration helps, sometimes cutting off the light helps, depends on the type, but generally the, the best thing you can do is just to uh, get a gram-positive uh, antibacterial uh, antibiotic and, and nuke it with that, unfortunately. Well, guys, I am really beat. Uh, it's been several days in a row of being up all night and then, like, taking a nap for three hours, working again, taking a nap for two hours, working again uh, for another ten, then, you know, a break. And because of that, you know, we've got the coloring book pretty much honed in. Uh, even doing it on mobile devices, pretty impressive that I was able to do that versus uh, anything else. Now, I do want to mention another and uh, one more thing, too, uh, before I sign off. And you know what? If I take a nap tonight and then I have a bunch of energy later tonight, uh, like late, late, I'll do another stream for y'all, okay? Um, because right now my eyes are just doing the, like, oh, sleep. And uh, I don't want to... I don't want to just slowly tank the show into, like, sleepy time. But, um, you know, I really appreciate y'all being here. Y'all spending your time with me. Spending your mind with me. Uh, spending your rhymes with me. But, uh, yeah, thanks, guys. Bunny Viper, what up? Uh, Pisces, what up? Alec the Nice, what up? Do another stream. I'll watch uh, on the way to work. All right? All right, I'm holding you to that. Uh, boy, just scratching my head slightly really made it red. I think that uh, something is irritating me in that cyanobacteria. Wouldn't surprise me, honestly. Um, all right, guys. So the last thing I'm going to say is uh, there, we can probably get a link in the chat to Dr. Maserol's uh, project in the Amazon, the Amazon Center for Ornamental Fish Research, uh, which is just a great cause. That's where we're doing the coloring book for for the groups of kids that come through the Amazon Aquarium down there. There's going to exhibit uh, a rotating crew of several hundred uh, at most, I think, several hundred different native uh, Amazonian fish that are from the general larger Iquitos area in the west, northwestern, north, or or I guess far western Amazon, before it hits the the um, the uh, the Andes, and so it should be a really cool thing. But I want to thank um, uh, Luke. Uh, and aka Perian Wang, man, you have you've really supported this cause. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's not it's not my nonprofit, obviously, but I really do believe in it. And he doesn't, uh, Doctor Maserol doesn't take any pay. They could they could assign themselves, you know, some title and and work out a way to get paid, but they don't. It's him and his wife just busting their uh, their you know what's just for years to get this place set up and to do all sorts of aquaculturing, discovering new fish for the hobby, new fish for science, and then also just 
um, teaching the locals how to replicate food out of whatever fish are available at the time locally and how they can grow those outside of the river in ponds and things with some very basic knowledge. And so between that and uh, the um, ARCOF, uh, that's their acronym, uh, fundraiser that I'm doing uh, with our team, our YouTube team, which, by the way, guys, you guys rocked so much. We've already hit our goal. We hit it in two days. So anything above that goal is just chef's kiss above and beyond awesome. Uh, and they can use, you know, they can use it. They, they're hoping for 20K or so in total for their operating budget, I think, is what the, the real goal was. But I am starting to fade guys you can see my hair is coming out it's going bing, frizz and uh also i'm just getting uh my eyelids are getting very heavy as i've stopped and instead of i, I work on the tablet like pacing and looking up close and coloring and being real active and as soon as i have cranked down the uh, level of intensity on that i just kind of go and uh kind of zonk for a bit so thank you so much for joining hopefully late late night uh in say for like mm, six hours from now perhaps i may stream a little bit again just kind of check on what fish are spawning or whatnot it just depends on how tired i am and what's what's going on so uh, I'll keep you guys posted, but thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much, Super Chatters, Lurkers, Members, Member Extenders, uh, Lurkers after the fact, uh, and my mods and special guests, Seattleites that are in the chat or, or local, uh, local folks. So good to see everybody, honestly. It, it's, it's great. So I will talk to you guys later, and uh, have a wonderful night. Bye, guys. <laughs>